Amos chapter 6 verse 10 reads, And a man's uncle shall take him up, and he that burneth him, to bring out the bones out of the house, and shall say unto him that is by the sides of the house, Is there yet any with thee? And he shall say no. So for some of you who are not familiar with the tribulation, what you've got to understand is that during the day of the tribulation, God's going to be sending down his judgment upon the earth to judge all of the sinners who have rebelled against him, who have not served him correctly. So because of that, what the Lord's going to do is he's going to send down his judgment. And when he judges them, what he's going to do is that he's going to make sure that those same people who are judged, that they're going to have, without an excuse, they will have no excuse through God's judgment that he did everything he could to try to open their eyes that, hey, even if I send you the worst kind of judgment, you're still not going to repent. You're still not going to acknowledge me as God. You're still not going to worship me. Oh, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, based off of Revelation 16. Did you read Revelation chapter 16? If you read Revelation 16, that verse shows that when the people received the plague of boils, you know what the people did? They repented. They got right with God. No, they did not repent of their evil deeds. You might say, wow, how can people do that? Well, that's how wicked people are. Sometimes people don't understand that fact that people can be that desperately wicked, but you guys just don't know that. So let's look at Jer uh, Jeremiah 11, but... While you turn over there, let's continue reading this, Amos chapter 6, verse 10. So notice the first part of Amos 6, 10, God sends his judgment, right? So when God judges the individual, when God judges the sinner, the sinner does not repent. The sinner refuses to repent. So then, will he finally look up to God for help, acknowledge God? Nope, he's not going to acknowledge God. As a matter of fact, they're going to say, don't mention God. Don't mention that name. That's why it's no surprise when you look at liberal news media and then Obama and Clinton and then Bernie Sanders and those guys. That's why what they're going to do is that when it comes to the Bible or Christianity, they're going to shut their mouths about that because that is a sign of being closer to the last days of people who absolutely refuse to make mention of the Lord. Look at the last part of verse 10. Then shall he say what? Hold thy tongue. Be quiet. For we may not make mention of the name of the Lord. It makes me wonder with these news reports or with these politicians, maybe... There are certain powers in there that says you're not allowed to make mention of this. Maybe, let's, be, let's think about this. Maybe Obama, Clinton, and Sanders, let's take it for granted that they didn't mean to say that. Then somebody else may have told them to use that kind of term so that they can keep what? Their popularity with different religions and different nations. That's a possibility to think about. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 11 as well. Jeremiah chapter 11. Jeremiah 11. Now, this one is really good right here. Jeremiah chapter 11. Let me read you some reports concerning about uh, what these people, these three main famous beloved politicians of the millennials today, what they said concerning about the Sri Lanka attack. So then it was obviously a, a tragic event where there are a lot of people in those churches who got killed, but look at this. The quote about this is, you're gonna naturally say Christians, because even, let's even assume that these people were not genuinely saved Christians, the lost world normally assimilates all of them as what? Christian. So this shows right here that if they're not gonna even use that word, it shows how much disdain they have for anything that's Christian. So here's Barack Obama's wonderful little tweet. The attacks on tourists and Easter worshipers in Sri Lanka are an attack on humanity. On a day devoted to love, redemption, and renewal, we pray for the victims and stand with the people of Sri Lanka. Easter worshipers, they call it. Easter worshipers. That's really funny. Again, think about this. What is the normal reaction when you hear about churches being attacked? You're going to naturally, the first thing in your head is Christians. 
even if you're not a saved Christian, you're going to say Christians were persecuted, Christians were killed. That's a natural first action response. Why do you say Easter worshipers? You don't even say this unless you came up with thinking some forethought before or planning it out, especially if other people are using the same term you are. So it seems like they're taking it out of the script from somebody. Bernie Sanders. Well, before I go to him, because I think his was the worst, which is not a surprise, but let's go to Clinton. On this holy weekend for many faiths, we must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attacks on Easter worshipers and travelers in Sri Lanka. So now she has travelers right here. <laughs> Here's Bernie Sanders. He don't even say Easter at all. Our hearts go out to the victims and families of the horrific attacks in Sri Lanka. Oh, clever, clever, very clever right here. No person should have to fear for their life in their place of worship. We must work to bring this world together around our common humanity. See that term? Humanity, people, person, individual. Come on, just say the term. Or are you afraid to say the term? Look at that. Now, the thing is this, is that what really, bo 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 excuse me, what really bothers me is that these stupid liberal news media, they're going to get on Trump and certain Republicans where they said, oh, you know, they were trying to avoid the term Muslim right here. They were trying to avoid the term Muslim right here so that Muslims don't get acknowledged. What about you, you hypocrite with Christian? What about you with Christian? Look at previous news reports and other reporters. They're going to say that. Oh, they, he didn't acknowledge the Muslims because he didn't use the word Muslim right here. You stinking, dirty little liar, you hypocrite, you, man. Hypocrite. Hypocrites will always be hypocrites. And you know what the liberal news media will always do, such as the Huffington Post? The Huffington Post, they actually quoted that, well, you know, Fox News and other Republican sources, they blew up about, oh, they did not use the word term Christian. Well, if they looked up Newt Green, Gingrich, et cetera, and the other politicians, they didn't use the term Christian either. Here's the funny thing about these guys, okay? You know what the problem with, I'm going to say both sides of politics, you know what, and both sides of news medias, you know what their problem is? You're always going to find some kind of politician that you can assimilate yourself with. So you, because you're going to find a certain politician that you can assimilate yourself with, you can use that as your getaway card for your argument. Because here's the thing is that just because that we get on certain Democrats for not using the term Christian, how many Repu Republican politicians are there in office? There's a lot, right? So since there's a lot of politicians, you don't think you're going to catch one of them who didn't use the word Christian either? It's easy to do that. I'm a researcher. Anyone can do that. See, so that's a lame, stinking lame argument. It doesn't change that fact. It's all a matter of picking and choosing. That's what the problem with news medias are. They all pick and choose different politicians, different quotes, so that they can slam each other on something. So that's not intellectual. That's not educated. That's not being non-biased. That's being partial right there. Another thing right here is that concerning about like, for example, we heard about the radical Islamic U.S. Army major and psychiatrist who massacred 12 soldiers at Fort Hood, Texas. The funny thing is that the media, what they did right here, is that they would portray him as trouble or they failed to make any reference or tie to radical jihadism. They failed to tie that person with Islam. Now, here's the funny thing is that how many news media sources do you see about fundamental Christian, fundamental Christian, fundamental Christian? Now, this is a hypocrisy right here. It is true that there are these strange, weirdo people who I don't think are even saved Christians either. These are, they just take that by name. But in reality, they're not saved Christians. But the funny thing right here is, why would you take these group of people who killed how many people, huh? And then you take out these people. Now, compare the numbers. Who killed more people, huh? Now, do you see the extreme? That proves even more bias because you can find more information easily on these guys, but then you have to deliberately avoid them and pick on this one, which is smaller in number, which definitely proves you're biased. That proves even more unbiased. Yeah, I'll admit it. 
uh, Republicans, Fox News, etc. I don't agree with them either. And yeah, they are biased. But I'm going to be honest with you. If we're, uh, you guys are even more biased. Why? Because it's easier to find information on these rather than this. So you have to force yourself to pick information more than the Republicans. How about that? Now look at Jeremiah chapter 11. Jeremiah chapter 11. You know what they do, the world would do with saints of God? This is what they do. Verse 19, but I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. Right, Christians persecuted, but what happens? And I knew not that they had what? Devised devices against me. In what way? Saying, let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his what? Name may be no more remembered. That, the verse told you this is bias. This is a plot. This is a device. Let me go even stronger than that. That's even a conspiracy. Oh, no, it's a, you're giving a conspiracy theory. No, look at the verse. Look at the verse right here. The verse is even stronger than that. It actually will say conspiracy right here. We're going to look at verse, uh, let's see right here. Oh, I just lost it. All right, verse 9. And the Lord said unto me, A what? Conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. God considers that a conspiracy when you're trying to deliberately not make mention of the name. That's, good. That's considered conspiracy to God. That is considered bias to God. So this is a fulfillment of Scripture as we get closer to the end times. Let's also turn to... 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I have a few questions, okay? Again, if you think that, oh, we're just being nitpicky, then my question is this. I, I brought this up twice already. The third time I'm going to say this, okay? Who would say this as the very first natural response? This is not a natural response. By the way, this kind of term especially if it's shared with different people, you know this was scripted then. So this is my question. Why would you use this term? That's my first question. My second question is this. If you really think Obama is a saved Christian, why does the Bible say at 1 Peter that if any man is a, suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God? If he is truly a saved Christian, he's going to mention about that. These people, my people, like the Christians. See that? But why is it that he's more sympathetic with Muslims and he would assimilate himself like he's family with them if he's not a Muslim? I didn't say he was. It's just food for thought that you got to think about. It's just food for thought that you got to think about. People are just ignorant nowadays. Oh, you're saying he's Muslim. You're saying that they were biased when they said this. Well, you got to think about these kind of thoughts something to think about. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. Persecuted, but not what? Forsaken. Cast down, but not what? Destroyed. They can persecute us all they want, and they can stamp us down to the dirt, but guess what? What is still the number one, quote-unquote, religion that the world recognizes? It's still Christianity. What is the number one group that people still attack the most? Western, Eurocentric, pro white Anglo-Protestant group. Why do they still do that? Because, see, they know that we're still that powerful. Now, we don't assimilate ourselves, obviously, with these extremist, crazy, wicked people who dare have the audacity to assimilate themselves with Christians, and then they kill and murder a bunch of people. We refuse to assimilate ourselves with that. They are not saved Christians. I highly doubt they're saved Christians. If they are, then I'm going to say this. Those guys are demon-possessed. And the Bible says we should treat them like a heathen, not like a brother, based on Matthew chapter 18. So the thing is right here is that you can never wipe out Christianity. It will still march on. You can put us at the dirt, and the Bible prophesied it too at Amos chapter 6, Jeremiah 11. What will the wicked do? They're going to not make mention of us. And that is a device, that is a conspiracy. But guess what? You're not going to stamp us out. You know, we're still all over. You still can't stop us. And one day, we're the one who's going to knock on your door and ask you, yeah. if you die today, are you 100% that you would go to heaven? Won't you like to become a saved Christian? 
We're going to be the one that you're going to see on the street. Even if you avoid us knocking on your door, you're going to see us on the street saying, are you a saved Christian? <laughs> Did you receive Jesus Christ for your salvation? You're not going to get rid of us. Amen. We're still going to stand out because the Lord mightily will prevail with his church out of great love for your soul so that you can be saved from the flames of hell. He's going to keep the church marching on so that you can have the opportunity to experience the love of Jesus Christ and receive Christ for your salvation.